Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India interesting topic uh, today we are discussing in this particular session day, that is uh, doing the right things and uh, the, here we will talk about uh, leadership and doing the right things, uh, moral leadership, five ways to develop the moral leadership, uh, the state of moral leadership today, uh, inclusive leadership, uh, six states of an inclusive leader, uh, tips to boost inclusive leadership at work, uh, uh, understanding the theory X and theory Y, shared leadership and the as usual we will be talking about uh, the research paper, case study, book recommendations and the giving you the references for the further studies. So, it is not the leadership, it is just to go along to get along, it is must uh, mean uh, the moral challenge of the day and therefore, in that case uh, it is very interesting. So, uh, it is not by hook or crook. The uh, message is that is uh, it, it we have to go with our leadership and to influence and getting things done all are getting along with others uh, it, it, ha it has to be uh, meet uh, the uh, moral challenge and therefore, uh, how we can go morally with uh, our the influencing the, uh, the our uh, followers right. So, doing the uh, here is the right things. Uh, so, we it, it is actually we have to be very careful that we should not follow the that uh, there is a, uh, that what whatever is the, uh, the requirement is to be done. Many times what happens leader in the pressure of uh, influencing the others and getting work done and they, they adopt the uh, unethical practices. So, that is to be avoided. So, there is a distinction between leaders and managers that says leaders do the right things where managers do the things right, right and therefore, I always keep on saying these things, right. So, that leaders have to do the right things are to be there, right and managers do whatever has been told to them, right. Sounds uh, the deceptively simple, it takes great moral courage to do what is right even when the right action seems clear. Leaders set a moral example to others, right. So, that becomes the model for in the entire group or organization and the leaders who themselves do not honor truth do not inspire it in others also. This is also very important. I remember uh, when uh, I was a labor officer and that time uh, that uh, my boss, first boss, right, uh, he told me that is the if uh, uh, while negotiating with the union, if it is possible to do then say yes, right and uh, otherwise do not say that uh, just to get the uh, negotiation done, wage agreement done just do not say the yes, because later on you will not have uh, the face to show uh, your leaders, uh, union leaders and then the, in that case uh, you will lose that moral forever. So, that, the, that lesson is uh, about the moral leadership. So, moral leaders are the individuals who direct, uh, motivate, organize, uh, can, uh, creatively manage or in other ways move groups towards the morally valuable goals are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, um, this is the that motivation is very, very important. So, individuals uh, who are be, uh, becoming these uh, uh, that uh, leaders position are influencing others, they, they, they should motivate others to be uh, follow the right things are there. The leaders might be in position of authority uh, or uh, may not be right. So, sometimes he is in authority, sometimes it is not the uh, positional power which is, is using. Uh, it can be shown by individuals participating at the all levels of organization. It is not only like uh, at the uh, few levels only, but rather than it has to be to the all the levels. So, moral leadership is providing values or meaning for the people to live by and inspiration to act and motivation to hold oneself accountable. And I tell you that journey of leadership that will go long whenever you are having the moral leadership. If you are not having the moral leadership, 
uh, after some time in the beginning you may go fast right but one day there will be accident right but if you are having the moral leadership you may go slow but definitely you will reach to your destination so be, uh, be as a dri uh, uh, driver seat as a leader um, be be uh, have the moral values I identity a set of values so moral leaders guide themselves with values and ethics uh, that they develop over time and with experience right and uh, mm, this is true as the time moves then we decide that is the and we learn basically that is the what is the importance of moral values because uh, in in the young age or in the beginning or inexperienced persons especially so they what they, they are more uh, anxious to give the results right but that is not correct. Second is manage your ego. So, leaders have a sense of self and are not threatened by others, but they also recognize that their self is not the most important thing and that leadership is not about them. So, leadership is about serving others, it is not about you to, uh, you are your interest, right? That is why the servant leadership and true leaders value other people and put the interest of others first. This is very very important. That is the whatever these uh, your leadership is there. So it is not for the self. You know? I always uh, uh, say this thing. That is the leaders. You see, normally leader, leaders are not working for self, achievement of any goal for self. They are working for others. They are inspiring others. They want to do for a simple example is the society. They work for the society. A, a, there is a cause to serve the society and that is the leadership is a mechanism to serve the society. Consider the diverse group of people and, and include their views. Uh, uh, leaders do not impose their values on others uh, rather than they consider other uh, people's values. So, uh, when you want to get the people along with you, you have to consider them and when you understand them, then definitely by these making these understanding, you are creating a team. So, people seek moral leadership when they want change, right. So, therefore, in that case, that time they become very much moral because they know that is this moral leadership will be appreciated. Leaders do not fear change, they have the courage and conviction to share a vision to try and bring about the positive changes there. So, therefore, this courage and conviction uh, that uh, that is becoming this uh, that making them the mo more effective, right. So, if uh, they, they, uh, they are having the any uh, goal or target uh, with the followers uh, they will have the courage, they will not shy away that is the this is this is the goal, no, because that goal, goal is having the moral value. Whenever we build the consciousness and establish unity, it is rare that everyone will be on board with your opinion or views. We have talked about the personalities and there are different types of personalities. So, every personality is having his own uh, process of thoughts. So, uh, therefore, in that case, uh, it is a leader should learn a 20, 60 and 20 rule. A leader listens to people with different views is there, right. So, they will be 20 will be of a highly strongly favorable to you, 60 will be that is the moderate favorable to you and 20 definitely they will uh, uh, they oppose you. A leader knows not to try and win everyone over. Leaders also know uh, not to create divisions, it is very important that is do not create the divisions right. Uh, otherwise, uh, divide and rule uh, that is a very popular phrase uh, used by these Britishers, but then uh, later on that has not worked. The moral leaders do their best to communicate a purpose that can inspire as many people as possible. And the moral leadership is something when can strive for it can be difficult to attain, but uh, it is worth to do it and exercise it. So, uh, our objective or goal should be that is the going towards that particular the moral values. The another state of the moral leadership is that is innovation and creativity. 
what I have found that is that those who are really successful, they are highly innovative and creative. They will never, uh, they will not getting these discouraged by these barriers and the, uh, the constraints, right. By innovation and creativity, they come out with the solutions. So, employees say managers who behave like moral leaders, treating people with their dignity, showing humility so others can shine, right, are eight times better at encouraging, in, uh, encouraging innovation and creativity. So, therefore, whenever we have not always recognized that the wrong kind of leadership is a measurable risk area in business. Employees recognize things go wrong when those in position of formal authority do not have the formal moral authority. You know? So, therefore, if they are not having the moral authority, then you are, you are uh, uh, that uh, uh, the followers, they know it. Better performance employees want moral leadership because they believe it helps them to perform better and then, then there is no fear, they are protected and then there, there is no uh, risk there and therefore, in that case whenever we are talking about uh, uh, the uh, moral leadership. So, moral, moral leadership is encouraged by the innovation and creativity, it is, it is lowering the risk, right? it is increasing the followers. So, expectations for the moral actions are not just behaving ethically right? and standing up for a moral cause. This year, 45 percent of employees say their CEOs are taking stands on moral issues, but only a quarter of CEOs exhibit the behaviors of moral leadership that generate better performance. So, therefore, uh, 45 percent uh, CEOs uh, uh, of employees say that is they stand on for the moral issue, but very a quarter of them only that is the really they exhibit the moral leadership they generate better performance. Because this is also very common to talk about the moral leadership, but it is very difficult to compliance with the moral leadership is there. A culture of doing the next right thing, so building moral leadership is a company wide effort, right. But actually uh, it goes from the top to bottom. So, whenever there is a moral leadership is there, it will go that is the maximum impact will be there when the, the person who is at the top know, if he is morally strong, then definitely in the organization culture you will find everybody is uh, have to follow the moral leadership. Because they know that if they will be doing the uh, anything uh, wrong, then th that will affect uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the their results and, uh, and their job also because the, at the top the person is highly moral oriented and whenever uh, your head of the nation head of the organization when he is having the moral uh, uh, strongness then definitely in that case uh, we will find that is the it it is given it, it has been given the better and better uh, the results are there. The capacity to manage inclusive leadership, right. So, whenever we are talking about the servant leadership, that servant leadership is also involves that is include your followers. Those ever whoever your targets are there, always involve them and therefore, I, I, those days are gone when the leader himself was responsible. Now, it is the team which is the having the collective responsibility and collective leadership. So, here the inclusive leadership is uh, whenever you are having the different type of per people followers, then the culture is different, their diff geographical locations are there, uh, their nationality is different. Then, then, then in that case, uh, the leader is having the big challenge and what is required uh, by that leader is that is the he identify the talent and then making the competitive advantage and inspire diverse people to work on that particular direction and this organization and individual performance whenever they are having that uh, shared vision, collective vision, working together, brotherhoodness, then definitely in that case uh, uh, they will be more successful and they will be leading the organization uh, together. So, six states of an inclusive leader is and that is the commitment, uh, treat everyone with the fairness and respect courage, engage in uh, uh, the tough conversations when necessary because uh, sometimes what happens no, that is your some group members uh, they will like to oppose, but then in that case that leader requires to have a courage to protect the others. Cognizance of bias that is aware of unconscious biases, so decisions can be made in a transparent, consistent and informed manner. So, whenever there is a transparency is there hmm, and then, then everybody knows 
that is the why this decision has been taken. As far as the curiosity is concerned, they listen attentively and value the viewpoint of others, right. The cultural, uh, cultural intelligence uh, seek out opportunities to experience and learn about different cultures and the collaboration is there that is a create teams that are diverse in thinking. So, therefore, uh, in that case uh, it becomes very, very important that is the whenever we are talking about uh, uh, these uh, collaborations then uh, and the team building is concerned then the, that cultural intelligence and collaboration and uh, that will helping uh, to making, making that uh, inclusive leadership. So, therefore, in the inclusive leadership uh, the, the leader has to be very sensitive enough to identify that is the if they are the diversified workforce diversity and whenever there is a workforce diversity is there it is becoming more challenging for a leader to have a inclusive leadership. So, how this uh, we can uh, boost to an inclusive leadership is there because uh, there is a need for this type of training uh, many many leaders they are otherwise good, but uh, they are not following the inclusive leadership and which is the, uh, the formula for success. So, attend an inclusive leadership uh, training uh, through the certain uh, uh, certain activities that is a storytelling you can learn uh, what the most are triggering uh, biases are for you and ways to overcome them. You can recall and practice them uh, on a regular basis to stay bias free. So, therefore, one is required to be the bias free whenever there, there whenever we talk about the inclusive leadership is there. So, fi uh, find a mentor. Now, always uh, uh, with these training programs we can find out that is the how we can go for this particular style of the leadership inclusive leadership is there. And uh, uh, this is to be learned under somebody right and uh, as you practice more and more then you can discuss openly with uh, your teammates it is uh, how inclusive your managerial approach is. So, on, on the basis of this uh, uh, these uh, uh, the by the training uh, by the working with somebody who is already is have proved uh, to have a inclusive leadership because it did environment no that environment also influence on uh, the follower. So, when the leader leader is having the moral values, uh, leader is having the inclusive leadership, uh, leader is more participative. When you work with such type of bosses no, then the mentors you can say. So, then in that case uh, you also learn and get influence and then in your future journey you also follow the all these practices. Theory X and Theory Y were the first explained by McGregor in his book The Human Side of Enterprise and they refer to two styles of management authoritarian that is the Theory X and, and the participative theory, theory Y is there. So, in case of the authoritarian theory uh, they, uh, the approach uh, is uh, have a uh, uh, we will talk about that is the people people and they, and they, their is requirement uh, of the, the tight control is there. While in the case of the theory Y, like you see the direction of arrows, right. So, therefore, in the theory Y, the people enjoy working, right, and therefore they are getting more and more involved. So, how your perception of what motivates them can shape your management style. So, uh, first identify that what type of the followers you are having. You are having the theory X type of the followers, or you are having the theory Y type of the followers, and that the flexibility, that change, that change is required to be followed by the leader. Because uh, I, I have mentioned earlier that leadership has to be changed, tune up. Leadership style has to be tuned up according to the followers. The assumption in theory X is that employee dislike work, and they are lazy, they dislike responsibility, and must be coerced to perform. Theory of X managers tend to make a pessimistic view. It is not optimistic, a pessimistic view of their people and assume what they are naturally unmotivated and dislike work. Work in organizations that are managed like this can be repeated to and people are often motivated with a characteristic ap approach. So, therefore, in that case, uh, uh, in the theory X, it was mentioned. Mm, that is the uh, why the people mm, uh, uh, that uh, uh, they, uh, how to handle the people by the leader and therefore, uh, but because the assumptions are uh, all are the about uh, uh, negative we can say. Uh, 
right disliking work avoiding responsibility need to be controlled need to be supervised at every step the close supervision is required otherwise they will not work because because the they are not motivated and therefore in that case the leader leader has to be a ringmaster and if the leader is a ringmaster, then only he will be able to get the work done. Otherwise, the people will not do. And this is this is created a, the autocratic style of leadership. And whenever the then the leader believes that is the unless and until uh, I will not be present, the people will not work. And therefore, they they are working uh, with the people with the close supervision. But theory Y is totally different. The assumption is that employees like work are creative, seek responsibility and can exercise self-direction, right. And therefore, in, in that case, there this is the other bouquet, right, uh, which is talk uh, where the every flower is having the beautiful fragrance. So, therefore, in that case, it is the work are the creative and seek responsibility and, and they want work, they like work, right and therefore, they say what we will do otherwise. So, we have to do the um, uh, work with our best uh, the performance right. So, theory by managers have an optimistic positive opinion of their people and they use a decentralized participative management style and because they trust they encourage the, their followers and their team members and therefore, they give the task ok you take this particular job you you do this particular task and they have and they, 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 that type of the environment. If that type of environment you can understand why people will like to work under the leader with uh, those who are believing in the theory why. So, the workers are enjoy their work uh, own initiative more happy to work uh, then more involved at the work they will be having the best potential contribution whatever the potential they are having they will contribute they will have the very, very good relationship also uh, with the leader and follower that type of culture you will find right. So, therefore, in that case uh, and that theory y style and that works, but here I would like to mention one thing that is the theory x theory y both are uh, right nothing is wrong. It depends on and that what type of the maturity level of your follower whether it is a theory x or theory y is there. If theory x belonging is there you have to make the appropriate leadership style. If the theory y style of the group is there you have to adopt the appropriate style. In case of the shared leadership where the team members collectively lead each other right and so therefore, in that case they, it is a leaderless uh, leadership and the shared leadership occurs when two or more members engage in the leadership of the team in an effort to influence and direct uh, uh, fellow members to maximize their team effectiveness. The shared leadership is the sharing of power and influence uh, with one person remaining in charge and the shared leadership leads to better organizational performances there and the this is developed by the being the transparent encouraging autonomy and being open to other ideas are there. And uh, as uh, we, 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 uh, we talk about that is uh, it, it is uh, it is creating an organizational performance right. So, therefore, definitely the shared leadership is always preferred. So, shared leadership requires a dynamic interactive influence process among the individuals in groups for which the objective is to lead because what is happening? they are influencing each other and if they are influencing each other then definitely in that case uh, the, the it is required that is the every every um, team member is a dynamic and interactive. If, uh, if it, any member is not dynamic or interactive that chain will break. So, shared leadership can be viewed as a prop, uh, property of the whole system as opposed to solely the property of individuals right. So, therefore, all are owner not an individual. Effectiveness in leadership becomes more a product of those connections or relationship among the parts uh, that then the result of any part of that system is there. Highly shared leadership is broadly distributed um, within a group or a team of individuals rather than localized in any one individual who serves in the role of supervisor is there. And therefore, uh, this type of the actually what happens you know in shared leadership there is a collective responsibility. So, everybody uh, feels that he is responsible. You take an example of a family. So, when there is a family in family every member is given the responsibility uh, then they will be binding 
that we have to do, we have to protect our family, we all have to work together and th this is the, our family and we have to perform and create a role model in the society. So, similar thing will be happening in, in the case of the organization also. Research is needed to examine potential moderators such as the distribution of the cultural values, task, in, uh, task uh, interdependence, task competence, task complexity and the uh, team life cycle is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, that is the whenever we are talking about uh, this uh, uh, the shared leadership is there. So, distribution of the cultural values the distribution of the task, this is a very, very important is there, because the ta task interdependence, uh, mm, whenever uh, you are forming a team, uh, you are you are distributing the task and the, if the people are happy by the given task, uh, then then there is uh, uh, no, uh, no issues, but many times we because we are having the rotation system and therefore, the task comes to a person who is not interested in that, then the performance will be affected. Team environment that enables shared leadership should consist of the three highly interrelated and mutually reinforcing dimensions, uh, shared purpose, social support and vice is there. And therefore, in that case whenever we are having that, uh, that particular team environment, then uh, here we will find that is the always uh, in, in, in this uh, shared leadership, uh, because you, you want to make the highly uh, uh, interrelated and so definitely mutually reinforcing and then that so social support that is becoming very, very important is there. So, in case of uh, um, this uh, shared leadership is concerned, whenever we are talking about the moral leadership is concerned, so that, uh, so please uh, uh, practice this, uh, these leadership styles uh, as per the need best. Hmm? So, not necessarily that is the always you are following the one style of leadership. Right, you can adopt the leadership style as we are talking about the different leadership styles, different concepts, different models. So, you work on those particular models. So, this is the research paper, external behavior in higher education, uh, education. does organizational learning mediate the relationships? And then these are the findings of the research paper which you can refer for you. This is the case study that is uh, uh, this case study you can refer uh, that is how practically an organization has done in this case study. And these are the questions uh, that is uh, you can use uh, for your the assignment purpose. Do you think leaders in military context exhibit the same qualities as organizational leaders? Why or why not? And what was not mentioned in the case of military leadership lessons not apply in the private sector? What might military leaders have to do to relearn to the work in business is there? More likely to benefit from presence of the battle tested leaders. Uh, and then you can give certain examples uh, of Indian uh, army leaders. Moral leadership in business uh, towards a, a business culture of integrity. Uh, so, therefore, in that case uh, how this moral leadership in business is becoming the successful and on basis of this uh, that is a successful business cannot afford to simply remain materially successful. right? So, therefore, whatever your profit uh, balance sheet is there that is not the only concern. Please refer these particular studies uh, for your uh, further uh, detailed uh, interest and uh, these are the web references from where this material has been checked. This is uh, all about uh, uh, the leadership, uh, the moral leadership uh, and uh, uh, shared leadership uh, which uh, uh, you ex expected will be followed by you. Okay. Thank you.